Look at this photo. It has good light and was taken with a high quality camera, but it lacks the professional editing that attracts millions of views. I'm Andrew, a visual strategist, and in this video, I'm revealing the one advanced retouching workflow that every high paid designer uses in Photoshop. This isn't just about smooth skin, it's about AI process and that crucial click getting realism to your thumbnails. Let's dive in. Like usual, creating new project. Let's put the photo on our project. First we need to upscale it. Now we can see that it's blurry. So upscaling is done. It can take few minutes but you can see the result before and after. Praise the result. After making upscale we need to remove the previous layer. I usually use the AI to cut our object but since this is a tutorial I will do it manually. Select the pen tool. You can use my settings here. And let's do. So selecting it by right click, make selection, change the value to 05, OK, and press Ctrl Honor Command plus J. Great, only the hair remains. Select the selection tool and select Michael. Then we click select and mask. Next we select the second option from the list. We click Alt or Option, the minus sign appears, we left click once on the hair, the cursor appears and now we are established the hair texture as the primary texture. And because of this we can successfully separate the hair from the background. This is how it looks and just like magic, the background disappears. We click OK. For the hair I usually don't change any other settings. And all that's left is to clean up a few small artifacts that Photoshop didn't perfectly cut out for me. Now let's change the background color to red so the details pop even more. The before and the after. Done. Now we need to convert this to a smart object. Next we go to the camera raw filter. We need to do a basic processing of our subject. Always focusing on the face. We need to place the curve handles on the left and right side so that the line starts exactly where the waves begin to grow. Next I usually add a little bit of shadows. The main goal right now is to make the light on the face uniform. We need to eliminate the blown out highlights like here and the dark areas without significantly sacrificing quality. To achieve this we usually bring the white down more aggressively. Let's add a little bit of contrast. Here you can move the slider left and right. You need to sharpen the details. Every time you will get the hand of it and it will completely automatic. Everything looks more or less great. Let's scroll down to the detail section. These are needed to make the image more detailed, as logical as that sounds low. Just play around with the sliders, trying to add sharpness while keeping the skin looking smooth. Next we need to desatur the eyes. For this we click here, then go to hue saturation and turn the slider all the way down to the minimum. Then to invert the mask we press Ctrl or Command I. Everything is inverted and now we can grab a regular brush tool, set the hardness to zero and paint over the eye areas. We are going for the white eye, Mr. Beast style look. And anything else that should be white, we just paint over. Now when both eyes are done, we press X to invert the color of the mask and we need to slightly clean up the edges for better accuracy and realism. We do the exact same thing on the left eye, just a very slight clean up. Now we just look much tighter, we press option or alt and clip the effect we just created to the layer below. Next we press expose, we also clip that layer and then copy the mask by holding down alt or option. Here I usually rarely change the actual pose value, I mostly adjust the last two sliders. You really just have to fill it out. 
so don't be afraid to play around with them until you find the best result. Sometimes you can even push the expose value into the negative, I usually add a little bit of saturation. It looks much more realistic when the eyes are in super white. Oops, that too much. I mean, uh, it could look like this, but I don't want the eyes to be poor white for realism. I don't like that effect, even though some designers do it. Great, we can see the before and after. Super, we press Ctrl or Command plus J. Out layer is duplicated. When we clip everything just like we did before, in the future this will all be automatic for you. Right now I have to consistently about every button I press just to explain it to you. This is actually not the easiest process. <laughs> Next we select the patch tool, we rasterize the layer and now we address all the blemishes on the skin. For example are these areas with the acne scaring. If you are a thumbnail designer, even molds are simply unnecessary on a thumbnail. However, if this were regular portrait retouching, leaving them could add naturalness. This specific blemish here or this uneven texture should also be removed. Once my friend was watching me do retouching and she said the process is identical to what she does when applying makeup. You literally add shadows, light areas and clean up blemishes, rawness and uh, unawareness. So it turned out we are makeup artists of a sort. <laughs> Next we create a new layer, holding down Alt or Option we select the skin tone that we will use at the base. We must make sure we have the brush tool selected and the our blending mode is set to the color. And here we can see the skin is a bit grayer so we paint and change the skin color. Also remember to sample the tone again when you move to the other side of the face. Because of the lightning one uniform skin tone is simply. Here is a bit more orange and that's ok. On the nose we hold Alt or Option and sample the color again. This is a small change that balances the skin tone and we use the eraser tool just a little bit where I went overboard with the color. Great, let's move to the next stage. Our goal is to remove the highlight. You can see them here, here and little bit over here. These are the skin reflections that are better to remove. We create a new layer again, change the opacity to 15% and let's start with the nose. We sample the color of the adjacent skin, set the hardness of the brush to zero and click a few times until the skin becomes uniform. Essentially we tap and the highlight is gone. We can also fix the shadows on the nose the same way. Now over here we also paint just a little bit and slowly the highlight completely disappears. Try playing around with the colors, I'm telling you. With practice you will be able to apply all this automatically. And we play with the opacity, so that this doesn't look completely smoothed out. We can leave just a little bit of the highlight visible, for example, I will set it to 75%. And here is the before and after. We can over use 85% to show more difference. Excellent, the face is almost done. We just need to add shadows. Right now the face is mostly one color. Toad is slightly brighter in this area die to the light. If you make the skin perfectly uniform, it will look unnatural. So let's add the, some shadows. We use a curves adjustment layer. First we add the highlight. I pull the curve slightly upward. You can do the same. And since it is very bright here and dark in here. The emphasis with the highlight will be on the dark area. We set the opacity to 35% and slightly lighten the area. We add another curves layer and put the curve slightly down. You need to understand the volume and shape of the face and adjustment to the shadows painting accordingly. And we remove a little bit of the effect here. It's also very important to paint a little bit of the nose. Using the X to invert the color. Regarding the mask, I think everyone already know how to use it. Excellent! And now I decided to add the final curves layer, this time to brighten the neck and also make the nose more definite. We also add a touch to the lips and eyes. Now let's change the color of the t-shirt. For this we select our pen tool and trace the outline of the t-shirt and press OK. 
Usually I add new layer, also clip it with alter option. For demonstration, I will quickly add the color, then we go to huge and saturation. We set the saturation to the minimum. Now we need to make the t-shirt have minimal shadows and highlight. I usually set it like this. Now we turn on our color layer. We set the blending mode here to multiply and we play with the opacity. It shouldn't be too bright or too blue. Don't overdo it. Well, that pretty much covers everything. All that left is to add the AI. To do this, I go to export and choose export as. You can simply copy my export settings here. And usually for final refinement, I use Magnific. Here I just choose classic and toggle between subtool and vivid. However, for here, vivid usually works best. We can also simultaneously use Magnific to exchange the facial features and the t-shirt. We can convert this to a smart object, next we drag in the result from Magnific, we clip it using Alt or Option, we create a mask, press Ctrl or Command plus I to invert it, and then we need to paint in our t-shirt. We can also set the opacity to 35% and gently brush over the hair, the forehead and the facial features just as I mentioned before. Now we bring in the result from classic model. Here the hair is changed much more dramatically. We clip it again using Option or Alt, create a mask, use Command or Ctrl plus I and similarly we, we paint in the hair with a white brush. We can press Command or Ctrl plus J to duplicate the layer, create a new mask and I usually set the opacity to 15 for this layer to detail the edges of the hair which sometimes it could look a bit too AI generated so you play with the opacity something like this and this and already it looked much better. So there is a final result. Check out the before and after, you can clearly see the professional difference. The skin is clean, the light is balanced. If you're ready to stop guessing and starting implementing this proven strategies on your channel, I'm open for a new client. Check the description below and go to the Discord or email me. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more design strategy and I will see you in the next time.